Yeah. Cool. Episode 66 of From Everyone. I'm here with TJ Redding, my man. Thank you for coming through today. Thank you for having me. Uh, so TJ is uh, a man of many talents, a man of many <laughs> productions here. Uh, the biggest thing we're here to talk about is Shoreline Summerfest this summer. Uh, so I know tickets are 20 bucks. It is on July 20th in East Haven at the Beer X, uh, which rules. Huge things going on. Yeah, it seems like oh, everything. Yeah. $20 tickets. I saw 20 vendors, 20 beers. Like 20 seems yep. like the number of this one. Yep, yep. <laughs> Hell yes. uh, somebody said uh, it was the, the 2020... 20 rule or something. Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes. And where are you finding? So yeah, $20 tickets is great. I guess the first thing is, yeah, where are people going to buy tickets? Where before people dive into this, when they're interested and curious, yeah, where do they go pay yep. for those tickets? Uh, ShorelineSummerFest.com. We have a whole website, everything that you need to know, and you can buy tickets. They're through Eventbrite, but you can get all the info and stuff straight from ShorelineSummerFest.com. Beautiful. And have the, I know it's the third one, so were the first two also $20 tickets, or is this like a new venture for you guys? Uh, I think the first one might have been 15 Oh, okay. I think yeah. if, if anything, it might have been 20 and I'm just completely <laughs> wrong. But uh, we've always tried to keep it pretty low. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a technical... The first things first is not a money-making venture. It's more Hell about yeah. the passion. Uh Sustainability is obviously a concern for something when you're when you have a whole bunch of bands. Yes, uh, price may have to increase as we see with this year. We put a little more bands on. We get more things going on. We're going to be in the entire parking lot of the venue, that so rules. pricing may go up. But it's we're trying our best to keep it affordable for everybody. Twenty is so. already great. So even if it went up to thirty, it's like that's one hundred fifty percent for you guys, which seems like exactly. a huge increase. And for us, it's like you're still doing right. great there. So yeah. you got a, a lot of room to grow there. And I think I saw there's two stages as well. So I assume one of them is in that beer X, like the the back room, the brewery room. I filmed drum playthroughs there for Magnets for Maniacs, which is like a local metal band. Uh, so I've been in that room, and you said the parking lot. I think maybe it's the second stage here. Yes. Yep. Hell yeah. So we have the. If anybody's been to a beer rack show in the past, the stage where they usually have it is the main stage area. And then I actually bought a stage myself that I now own that we're going to set up outside in the parking lot. That's the same size as the one inside. Uh, and bands will alternate throughout the day. So we'll have one playing outside with like, I think it's a 15 minute stagger. So you'll be able to see at least a little bit of every band. That rules. That's always yeah. the nightmare. I, sorry, I'm missing the point here. But you said you bought a stage. I, I bought a stage. This? You glance over that as if it's a normal thing that other yeah. people buy. And I guess in the production world, certainly, yeah, I've bought things that, yeah, I've spent $700 on a camera lens where it's like, you spent yeah. how much on what? And yeah. Yeah, that's what you do sometimes. So buying a stage is not that crazy, but to someone listening, that is a bizarre thing to hear. It certainly is. I feel like I've told so many people now at this point, I forget <laughs> that like it's like <laughs> yes. it's a weird thing that to now own. Uh, luckily for the beer racks, they're storing it there for me, but it's it's two pallets worth of stuff, so it's it's crazy. And are these like stage decks? So it's like, yeah, independent squares that you put together, or is this like the truck cab thing that like unfolds and is the whole bullshit? So it's it's I think they're three by three panels mm -hmm. and then all the leg pieces and all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. And why did you buy a stage? Are you, <laughs> are you putting on enough shows, I guess, then that buying a stage made sense? Yeah. So I was, I looked, I shopped around for quotes to like rent for something like this. And people were quoting me the price of what I could buy it for. Mm -hmm. it, I bought it on Alibaba from China. <laughs> so okay. it's, uh, it was it wasn't affordable, but it was affordable in Closer the essence of yeah. I do two events and it pays for itself is Damn. how I looked at it. So, uh, I hope to be doing this at least for the foreseeable future. So if I if we do it again next year, that's a huge expense that I don't have to cut on mm -hmm. um, next year's sheet. So and is this has the stage been tested yet? Have we affirmed that the Alibaba <laughs> story is good? That was a big concern for the Birax guys. Yeah. Uh, but they're going to be, I just got it in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we took it all apart. We tried to build it and realized that, oh, we're missing the legs. Uh, turns out they're just at the very bottom of the pallet. I don't know why you would <laughs> do that. But I went back there a second time and took all the pallets or all the panels off. And sure enough, they were all at the very bottom. So now I have to go back and they're going to set it up, I think, uh, to test it for like a weekend worth of shows. I don't know when it might be this weekend, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're going to test it because that's, that was my biggest fear is you set that thing up, you buy it from China, somebody gets on it and just fucking breaks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I have uh, 
five people up on stage and the thing falls apart and somebody dies and then I get sued and then, you know. <laughs> Fun stuff of running events. Yes, yes. <laughs> liability is always a huge thing. Yeah, yeah I'm at plenty of events and liability is always the, the key thing of, yeah, someone has to take control there and make sure. And I'm always, yeah, as I think scales, liability gets more and more complicated and impressive. And yeah, I think we're kind of probably still in the glory phase where like you still can buy a stage from China and have the guy set it up for you and oh, test yeah. it. We're like, yep. yeah, hopefully in 10 years, that will not be something that is even no, possible I, for you. I hope not. So. Uh, hell yes. What, how do you, uh, what made this the right stage? Like the price point obviously is one pack factor here, but like what qualities are you looking for in a stage? Was it just size based as like materials that we hope for? Like what makes a good stage? Well, I knew that, we had talked the last, uh, mostly last year, about doing a second stage outside. It wasn't. It was more of kind of like a. We did, we weren't serious about it. I don't think because of the, like logistics of the whole festival, hmm. um, with how many bands we had. The thought was, oh, we can add more and we can bring more people out and all this stuff. Uh, I knew it was going to be outside just from that kind of idea. There's really nowhere else to put it inside. Yeah. Um. So waterproof was one option. Uh, the stage that they have currently that the Beer Axe uses inside is, I think it's made of plywood or okay. something. And they said that they had, when they first got it, they had a bunch of panels like start to crack and stuff. So I was like, well, I don't want to get one that's going to crack. So mine is made of steel. Okay. That sounds uh, like an upgrade from wood for sure. <laughs> and it is waterproof. And I also wanted it to be adjustable height. So the legs mm -hmm. can go, I think, about as tall as this table. Okay. And then it can go down to like a foot to three feet tall. That's nice. So it'll be elevated off the ground. And with the adjustable legs in a parking lot that's not perfectly flat, you can adjust yes. it to yep. make it all work. So a lot of thought <laughs> before buying something that big. I was like, yes. I got to do every little bit of research. It before seems I'm like a terrifying purchase. And yeah, I always feel this when I'm looking at camera stuff where like, yeah, a stage is a slightly different thing here, but like the uh, like light stands, like these stands to me are a similar thing of like, these aren't worth that much. It's not really worth investing on them. But when I'm interviewing someone and like in this context, it is, <laughs> I guess, less fearful for me, but there are times I work with like a production company that does stuff with colleges. Yep. So I'm often sitting down with the dean of the school, the president of the school, the, yeah, all the, the important rich people in suits. Yep. And to me, it's like, man, if I have a big light over one of them and that stand fails, it's like, <laughs> damn, I'm going to, I would have paid anything for that stand. Yeah, and it's yeah, similar yeah. to the stage problem of like, probably it's never going to fail. Probably it won't. Generally, these things work. They, yeah, they're generally functional. But God forbid that 1% chance, like, yeah, you got to yep. plan to be extra redundant there and figure it out. Um, hell yes. But that's part of the fun of a local festival is getting to figure it out on the fly. And it seems like you've been figuring this out for a while. So yep. uh, I assume part of buying a stage, yeah, you mentioned that you're hoping to use it for other shows. Are there other like local shows you're booking currently? Like, is this a, a one-off project? Or are you doing shows throughout the year? And this is kind of the crown jewel in the summer. Yeah. So I've been, I was in a band for the last five years or so, and I just recently left. So I was doing most of the booking and stuff for that. So mm -hmm. making connections, doing all these things with these people uh, towards the uh, later half of my involvement in that band, I decided to partner up with one of my friends who is lives in like the Manchester area. Mm -hmm. I'm from down, I'm from Hamden. So I know the New Haven scene area. He knows kind of the Northern Connecticut stuff. We were like, oh, we could put this together and book stuff either in between or like he, he knows people who are up there. He could book shows there. I can help with the down south stuff. So we started booking shows together. This was probably a year ago maybe. We've done maybe two or three, but I think this was kind of the – it was to put a, a name on – I didn't want it to be TJ Redding Presents – it's mm -hmm. like I'm not I'm not about the clout of putting my name on the poster. <laughs> I relate so. to that so much. I had the same issue with this show of like it, it, right. it's about me, but the the Peter J T show just felt like a crazy yeah. thing to yeah <laughs> print and promote and put out there. So I'm always kind of uh, I'm curious if you're in the same boat where from everyone has always felt like an imperfect name, and I just uh, cha updated it from something from everyone to just from everyone, uh, which I think is a step in the right direction. But it's never felt perfect, but it, Better, better than Peter JT show. Uh, for you, is, has the name been something that like stuck and grew and felt right? Or was it something that still is kind of like, a, eh, it's not perfect, but it works for now? Yeah, so when we were naming the festival, we were trying to come up with a whole bunch of things. And I was like, I don't even remember how we landed on mm -hmm. it. But the more I think about it, and I'm like, in five years, if this grows more every single year, like it has been, 
and it turns into something, I'm like, I hate the name. <laughs> it's like, I know I'm going to want to change it. Even yeah. if it's like, I could keep the shoreline, like yeah. I like that, but it's the summer festival thing. I'm like, maybe I'll change it to music festival yeah. and no one's really going to care. But it's like one of those weird things when people are like, I actually just did, I, I found out, I'm a huge Peanuts comic fan. Uh, I just found out that uh, Charles Schultz hated the name Peanuts. And I'm like, could you mm -hmm. imagine living your whole life like behind this name yep. and you hate it? Yep. And it's like, that's, I fear that happening. <laughs> so, To some degree, yeah. And I think it's the same uh, same energy as the band who has the one single that goes big and has to play that song for 40 years. Exactly. And it's like, yep. yeah, I think no matter what you what you make <laughs> at a certain point, if you have to stick with it forever, it kind of yep. <laughs> loses its lust there. And I don't, I don't hate it. I could live with it, but it's, it's fun. The, uh, the booking company we called Salt Jacket, mm -hmm. which that name was, I had a running list in my notes app for like band names and stuff. Uh, this was one, I think I was in college, which was probably like 2017 ish. Uh, one of my friends who's notoriously just insane, uh, <laughs> was throwing out just like a bunch of weird names of things. And he was like Salt Jacket. And I still have no idea what it means. <laughs> But it was in my notes thing, and I said, yep, that's it. And we just that's, rolled with it. Hell yes. But, that's, yeah, yeah, it's wild how that sticks sometimes <laughs> and these things last. I like the Shoreline Summerfest. I think Shoreline is nice because it's like a diverse enough name that like it could move, and it like, doesn't have to be in New Haven. Mm -hmm. It could go to a, a new spot, and it feels like there's longevity there. Where I'm, Yeah, I think of some other companies that like tie themselves to, to a place or to a specific thing, and it's like, you better hope that stays a good right. place for you. Yep. Um, hell yes, dude. So... Uh, booking shows before, and then where's like the Summerfest start? So I'm guess uh, I guess I'm going way back in time here. Of like, are you in middle school like booking like events with your friends? Like, are <laughs> where are you always the planner? And then it, as you get into high school, I assume you're in a band, and it's like, well, I want to play shows, and no one else is doing it, so I should do it, kind of thing. Is that the yeah? How does the thing get going? So I didn't really listen to music at all up until I was like a junior in high school. <laughs> what did you kinda, do with your ears? Right. I know. Kind of weird. Uh, were you a big reader? Were you watching movies? Was there something else you were consuming I a ton of? I played sports. Mm -hmm. Like I did, um, I played basketball my whole life up until high school and mm -hmm. then I didn't make the high school team and then I gave up. Shout uh, out. <laughs> Shout out coach. <laughs> yeah, th <laughs> thanks. Thanks Hamden High Basketball for crushing my dreams of being an NBA player. Now I make player. pop punk music festivals, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Uh, so I was a huge, like, I loved Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and like that kind of stuff. My dad always played like the Eagles and Queen and all that stuff. So I, I came up kind of with that, but I never like dove into it. Like some people, their whole identity in high school becomes, I'm a classic rock Leonard Skinner mm -hmm. fan. Uh, mine was basketball. And then I started, I joined the cross country team like this, my second year. Uh, but one of my friends who's, uh, was one of like one of my very good friends from high school. I've known my whole life. He's the singer of point radar. Who's on the festival. Uh, he showed me like a whole bunch of blink 182 and I, it just like it exploded <laughs> and I just went off and crazy. I started making my own songs, which are terrible. Uh, but it's one of those, like, I know they're bad, but I show everybody <laughs> because it's like, it's that stamp of like this is what i did then absolutely yes i love that whole thing even though i know it's shit it's like i just i feel something about it which i love um and yeah i didn't i don't think i booked a show or so okay so me and him were in a band when in college and we were like booking stuff for that but i i don't think i don't remember throwing my own show up until i was in the last band uh which was like probably 2018, I think, was when I put on the first show. Uh, but it's it's really just like you find a venue and then hopefully they agree. And ever since then, it's just learning like the the words and everything, like what people say, trying to make a reasonable deal with these people. And then luckily enough, we have a pretty large scene where bands are always looking to get involved and play on any show. So it's finding the right bands and stuff is never an issue, but finding the venues always are interesting. That's the, the challenging <laughs> yeah. part. Where was the first show held? Ooh, uh, the first show that I remember booking, I probably booked at the space, okay. I think. Yeah. And it was like, I don't even think I booked it really. <laughs> like it was like, uh, hitting up the, the space being like, Hey, we want to play a show here. And they're like, okay, does this date work? And you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then you show up and there's bands on it. It's like, I, I go blank when it comes to like, 
the first, the early years in the first band. I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> We're going to open up all that drum. We need to get into <laughs> all these shitty ass shows that we've got booked and played. Oh, there's Those are so, the best ones. so many shitty shows. Okay. Does anything stand <laughs> out as a, as a low watermark show that you booked that no one came to, that the promoter stole all the money from you? And again, please don't name any names that we're not comfortable <laughs> naming. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus here. But certainly, yeah, it, as I think any anyone who does anything enough is going to have some ups and downs in there. Uh, and I'm curious that, yeah, what stands out as a, as a learning lesson <laughs> along the way. In the, in the first band I was in, uh, I booked a show in Worcester at a, I don't know where I got the contact. It was probably through some Facebook group. There is a whole bunch of Facebook groups. Uh, and I'm trying, I'm trying to not say the name of the venue. <laughs> sure. uh, I booked it. And then I think the band like broke up, but I still decided to go play it. <laughs> and uh, I'm driving there and I find out that two out of the three support drop mm -hmm. and the other one is just one solo guy who's like <laughs> a 50 year old man nice. like playing folk music and i'm like okay well we're already on our way it was <laughs> it was me my girlfriend and my two friends from college mm -hmm. and we got there and it was just us it was us the sound guy and the one the one guy in a room that's like probably like a space ballroom like is Damn. probably yeah. 300 yep. capacity room completely empty it that is, was heartbreaking. Is the build up to this, like you telling your friends and girlfriend, like, yo, this is going to pop off Saturday <laughs> night. Or is this like, yeah, did you know it was going to be a dud? Or was your whole build up to this, like, yo, <laughs> this is the one. That was my first show I ever played out of state. So I really gotcha. didn't know mm -hmm. what to expect. And I don't think I went through a promoter <laughs> or anything. Yeah. So it was just like the venue saying, to three people that they happen to know come through often, like, do you want to play this? And okay, yeah, it, and it fell apart. The ride home from that kind of like your coming of age moment of like, okay, this is never going to happen again. I'm going yeah. to, yeah. What what fool? Uh, what like security measures go into place? Like, how do you prevent that from happening again? Are you yeah calling ahead or doing more location scouting? Is it a uh, uh, yeah? But yeah, what do you do to make a show better from there? That was definitely a thing where I was like, oh well, I could just go out and find these bands that I know in the area mm -hmm. that could like that's the benefit of social media and all that stuff is you can just look up who's in this area that is doing well for themselves like who brings 50 people to a show mm -hmm. and you can usually find that from just like looking at Instagram page and Spotify engagement all that stuff mm -hmm. so that's that's a big thing when this was like in that show was in 2017 or 2018 gotcha Booking stuff later for the last band I was in, there's a lot of like you're spending half your time reaching out to venues to try and fill the date because now we're booking for tours. We were doing like, hell yeah, here's this. We were doing weekends, but it's like we have to play a show mm -hmm. here on this day. So you're messaging 20 venues in the area within like a 20 mile radius trying to find. A venue that will say yes but at the same time you're trying to find bands that would be interested to in doing it so for one man it does become a lot and that's kind of why the band got to be a little too much and mm -hmm. then focusing on other things it's i have a lot more time to focus on the things that matter like the festival and yeah absolutely so then uh, yeah man of many talents man of many pursuits then so what are all, all your roles in the festival so we're working with like the venue on the location kind of stuff uh, actually, let's pause there. I want to go uh, back to just, yeah, the kind of build up to this thing. And we'll pause on your roles in the festival there. But I'm curious. So, yeah, this thing starts to gain momentum. It starts to kind of book shows on the side. Uh, you start learning stuff. You start figuring out, like, okay, this is how a show should work. Did you have any, like, anyone teaching you along the way? Was there anyone, like, were you learning from anyone? Is this, like, a YouTube tutorial kind of thing? Like, yeah, how are you gaining these contacts and starting to find your way? Uh, no. <laughs> Short answer, no. Perfect. A lot of it is... Uh it is just learning with mm -hmm. experience. There's a lot of like booking really bad, like you're booking yourself for a tour. So you're going to play in Philly and you end mm -hmm. up playing to nobody. And it's like, okay, well now I know next time, like this one kind of did fall apart. I didn't look up the right bands and stuff like that. Like most of the time you can't blame it on the local bands or whatever. But when you're, when you are the promoter for a show in another city it's you kind of know that it's not going to go very well. <laughs> so gotcha. towards the later end, it's like I was kind of taking some, I was focusing more on trying to get promoters to take on the show. 
so that I wouldn't have to be like running ads in Worcester for my show mm -hmm. to people that maybe have never seen me before. And as a touring kind of band, you're looking for the local support to bring the people that you can then they'll discover your music, yada, mm -hmm. yada. I think the other challenge with these like DIY runs is that you're working with venues that don't have the best rapport all the time or don't have a, a huge history to go with. Where like in in the world where you're booking with the Palladium, it's like they have done this a bajillion times. Yeah, they know right. what questions to ask. They know what con like it's all very formulaic at that point. But when you're calling around to dive bars, it's like you're getting a real hit or miss of like is this manager sober enough to have a conversation? Step one, like before we get to anything about the venue, like is this even a person who has a chance of doing business with me? And right. it, we don't often know at these times we're booking, yeah, 100, 200 person rooms. It's like you can get anyone in the world who has a space. And so you're, yeah, dealing with a lot of stuff and a lot of variety of like, yeah, you just don't know who you're getting, what they're going right. to ask of you and what they think booking a show is. And do they know that not 500 people are going to come? Do they think they need a security team? Like do they have any idea what the hell is happening here? I have had people say, I can't give up a Friday for this. And I'm like, all right, yeah, that's fair. Like, I'm yeah. like why turn down like 300 people that come in for the bar when you could just, or <laughs> why pay me to come and yeah. play when you're going to have 400 people there already? Yeah. yeah. And to those people, it's like, yeah, that works well. But for you as a booker, yeah, it makes life very tough where you're half dealing with the venues, but also like finding venues. Like these aren't places that are hole in the walls for 50 years. I feel like generally these venues kind of like pop up every five or 10 years and right. then it rotates. So you're always dealing with a, a new round of challenges as you're looking through yep. all the cities. And it is a shame because even like New Haven, there's no, you're, you're talking, there's probably 500 places that you could play. Mm -hmm. Half of them don't do live music. The other half or the other half of the half is 21 plus even in new haven county i don't even i couldn't even name on i couldn't even name two all ages venues and that really sucks because yeah. as somebody who did grow up kind of or sort of late bloomer mm -hmm. on the the scene uh being in high school it's like you want to go out and have a good time and party but you're not 21 the space was the thing it mm -hmm. was like that was all i could do my friends were in some bands that was like the exposure to the scene. But now I think about like uh, even a couple, two, two years ago, maybe booking a show at the beer acts and being like, well, shit, I want to put this. There were two, two acts that I wanted to actually book, mm -hmm. but they were like 16. I'm like, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't put you on it because that place doesn't let 20 under 21 in. And then the, the only other space to do it is is the space ballroom, and you got to pay a fee to get in there. And it's a bajillion dollar <laughs> overpriced. Yeah, I, I yeah. can't remember what it is, but it's uh, yeah. Not they're starting to do a little bit more with that now. There's a couple bands that are coming together, kind of throwing another promoter that does a good job with a lot of that stuff. All of yeah, my memory of like all the local metal shows I would go to were all like VFW seemed to be like the the right. humane hub of them, which in hindsight is a very bizarre I guess maybe not. I guess maybe metal and like military overlap more than I think they do, but it still <laughs> seems just like a very weird place for eighteen year olds to go play breakdowns while the veterans are in the back drinking. Yep. It's just yeah, I guess yeah. Maybe there's more of an overlap there than I realize, but it is always a yeah, a, a shit show of <laughs> trying to find just yep. somewhere that will let us go make noise for too long and too loud. And, right. Yeah, there's going to be a fight or two, and it won't be that serious, but like, yeah, where is going to let this happen for us? Yeah. And have you solved the 21 plus of the beer or is it still, that's the plan for the, the show? That the was festival? a good good thing with this year. The past two years, it's been 21 plus just because like, I think that's how they normally did it. And mm -hmm. I was pushing this year, like, what can I do to make it all ages? Because I feel like that's important. Mm -hmm. And as a, uh, doing the festival the last two years, there's kind of a, I have my typical group of bands that I know that I know will say yes and that do a, a great job with promoting and stuff. Uh, this year, I really wanted to branch out as far as I could and try to find some that would be maybe I haven't worked with before or uh, are a little bit younger to, to appeal to more of a younger kind of crowd and mm -hmm. everybody kind of helping everybody out where the some of the bands like, uh, like Shortwave, who are more like my age, and then a band like, um, I can't think, there's so many, there's 20 bands. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, um, one of the younger, one ones. of the younger ones. Yeah. yeah. The audiences will, will interact because yeah. they're, they're slightly different genres, but everybody likes the type of music. And I think it's a, it's a good collection, but we were able to get, um, 
porta potties outside, I guess, was the that's all we needed. Okay, so we don't have to go in the venue technically right. because it's yeah, inside or in the, plus. the bathrooms or, in there for anybody who hasn't been are like in the bar area. Mm-hmm. So I guess he was saying like we can't let mm-hmm. kids in there. So it's like if you put the bathrooms outside, you can make it all ages, but then you got to get porta potties and you have to have enough and that costs money. And mm-hmm. then <laughs> it's all it's all things. Always, always, yeah, something yeah. else to sort out there. It sounds like you're doing everything just about by yourself. I think there's, yeah, sponsorships that are helping with some of it, but are you doing all the legwork by yourself? Is there a partner helping you from the, the top down managing everything? Yep. So I have, I do, I do everything myself for the most part. Uh, I have my friend Adam, who is my salt jacket booking partner with that. He uh, has been looking up like some press contacts and stuff and he'll help out with like messaging the bands for updates and stuff um i talk mostly with the hoax brewing guys at the beer acts so sean and austin and joe from uh new england obscura shout out um they've been super helpful the last three years just like with they do this way more often and at a bigger scale than than i do so they could have totally just gate kept the whole thing, but they're such great people and they've helped me kind of grow into being able to figure some of this shit out myself this year. Uh, but lots of help from them. Uh, but everything that if you look up like shoreline Summerfest, I'm doing all the design, I'm doing the website, I'm doing the videos. Um, and the ads of everything <laughs> like it's, it's can be, my girlfriend hates it because it's yeah. uh, nine months out of the year. It's my life. <laughs> yes. So I am wired the same way to do things myself. And I think for me, there is a, a pride to want to do things myself and get it done the right way, whatever that may be and how we're right. It may or may not be in the process of it. But I think for me, there's also like just a, an un, I, I hold myself to such a high standard. I hold my work to such a high standard that I don't feel comfortable bringing on someone else to that. Cause I know it's not fair to hold them to that standard. So for me, in like the video editing context, it's like I edited for, I think, 12 hours yesterday, maybe more than that, maybe 13 or 14. That's not a good work day. It's not a work day I can ask of someone else. I right. can't expect anyone else to keep pace with that. And I shouldn't be doing that myself. But that's what, yeah, that's what being passionate, that's what being driven is. Right. And I'm sure you've had similar days with the festival there. There's, oh, yeah. Yeah, days yep. you could offload. But yeah, what has stopped you from offloading? And yeah, for me, it's kind of a, a trust thing. Of like, I don't feel like I can push you as hard as I'm going to push me. Right. What has kept you uh, so, uh, I don't know, the primary creator of the festival? Yeah, so <laughs> it was the last two years, the the band I was in kind of was my, it sort of took a, I have a passion for like branding, I would say, just okay. in general. So I like the idea of doing all of the things like the poster and the ads and the coming up with like concepts for that and all the marketing stuff. Uh I enjoy doing all that stuff. So it kind of was sort of pushed into my court. Uh, and on top of doing all the stuff for the band, this was kind of like a uh, a way for us to sort of throw a big show and put ourselves on it and do all that stuff. Um, so uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. I was asking, yeah, what has kept you independent, I guess, in the process? Oh, okay. What has motivated you to to stay so independent where it seems like, yeah, booking shows and normally a team of people. It seems like you got a lot on your plate and the, the graphic design stuff is all looked great. I was impressed by the website. I was impressed Thank to you. see that you were the one doing it all in Thank addition you. to all the other stuff going on here. But yes, it is a lot for one person. Yeah. So, uh, after this year is the first year that I'm like kind of really doing it by myself with the help of Adam. Uh, and it's not, there's no other kind of like team I have to get approval from. So it's Mm. sort of like it's turned into this year, like this is what I wanted to do and this is what I kind of saw it being the last two years. That rules. Uh, But I I have had some people who think that it's like this corporate Mm -hmm. thing and it's like I'm not, I'm trying to be, I'm not up playing it at all because it really, it, it is, it's great that people think that, but like this is the most down to like DIY that it can probably get. It's mm-hmm. literally just me. <laughs> like I'm, I'm throwing out cash, trying to get bands to play and like, uh, you know, keeping the costs low to let people come and enjoy this and all ages this year, it makes it so much better because then you can bring your, uh, younger siblings mm-hmm. and they can hopefully you can be a role model for them 
so that they can come up in the scene mm -hmm. and we'll have even more bands for the future. And that's kind of the the whole past the music, the community of the whole thing is what I really wanted to focus on this year and try to bring as many local businesses as vendors and stuff. And obviously like there's sometimes a vendor fee, but it's like it all just keeps the festival running. It helps pay the bands and yeah. Things cost money, unfortunately. Like, that is always my issue does. as I work with my friends and my friends, yeah, I'm doing a music video for them. And it's like, listen, if I could have you just pay my rent instead of paying me and then I don't have to pay taxes on it and you spend less money and my rent's paid and you know where the money's <laughs> going, it's like, it'd be this perfect little trifecta if we could just yeah, get you in touch with my landlord. But it sounds like you've thought about this. <laughs> a bajillion times, yes. I have always tried to find a way of like, I don't want to ask you for money. It just, it doesn't, I, yeah, I want to just do the thing with you. I like making stuff and the money is like for me to keep making stuff. I have to pay for this place right. somehow. Like yeah. I have to sleep somewhere. Unfortunately, if I could <laughs> figure out how yeah. to do it for less money, I would, but I, yeah. And I've always, yeah, gone through this motion of like, is there anything else that I can, or yeah, the same problem sounds like you're having of like, I, that's the trouble with the arts. It's mm -hmm. like, it's, we're not doing it for the money, but it's like, I'd like to live. Yes. <laughs> it's like, there's a little bit of that. It's like, if I could do this for free and have some random entity, just pay mm -hmm. me. So be it. I would do as much free work for people as possible, but it's like, I have yes. a million things going on and time is valuable. Yes. It yeah. sounds like, uh, talking from before the show, uh, it sounds like you and I have kind of found a similar uh, stability within the lifestyle or the artistic lifestyle there where for me it's the college shows that seem to be kind of like the 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 foundation that allowed me to then take risks on band and lose a little money in those yeah, ventures yeah. and it sounds like for you I know you're doing graphic design like full time and it sounds like that offers a stability then to go out and take risks in the other creative field is that a fair kind of summary of yeah, yep. how the, the priorities here are laid yep, yep. I work full time graphic design I do freelance graphic design screen printing and then booking shows. Well. Hell yes. Yep. And uh, yeah, not to get too much into your uh, nine to five, I don't want to yeah, make you overshare here, but is it a similar, are you marketing for other companies? Like what is the advertising that you're doing there? Is it similar to what you're doing for the festival or totally a different angle of advertising um, and marketing? On a, on a partial scale, yes. So we're, it's a full service marketing agency in New Haven. Uh, our big client that is probably the most applicable to what I do for the festival is the Big E. So I do Hell yeah, okay. all the, uh, like, it's it's not just me, but it's mm -hmm. a team. We work on mm -hmm. all the, like, billboards and print ads yep. and the maps and stuff that you see at the fair. We don't book the concerts and all that stuff, but we do, like, the creative campaigns and stuff for them. So that's... <laughs> I like that you clarify that you don't book the concert, which makes me think <laughs> that last year someone asked you if you know Ollie from Bring the Horizon, if you were the one who personally made this happen. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wish. I, I did, uh, we just presented, we do a year ahead. So right now we just presented like the ideas for 2025. Okay. Because this year they're working on promoting all the stuff for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got to meet the concert person for the first time. So cool. it's it's cool. They, they, uh, they book some big stuff there, but they also book some small stuff too. So uh, definitely go check it out. Absolutely. I just had a, a funny moment on site the other day. I was talking, yeah, I was at a concert and I was talking with one of the people there uh, and they're from Hawaii and I totally forgot they're from Hawaii and I was explaining an event. I was like, oh, it's kind of like the Big E. And they looked at me like, oh, what yeah. the fuck is the Big E? And it was Nobody this moment knows. of like, wow, that is, the, yeah, Connecticut, local yokel. Like, yeah, yeah, some of Mass will know about it, but outside of whatever, a couple 50, I don't know, 100 mile radius. Yeah. Like that is, yeah, our little hole in the wall festival that everyone here knows about. Yeah. I don't even know if I've ever been to the Big E. Like, I think I just know of it like conceptually, yeah. but I, yeah, it's a, uh, I hear local, that a lot. Local. It's yeah. one of those, like, I've always kind of knew it was there, but mm -hmm. I never went until like college yep. and then now I work for them. So it's like, <laughs> it sounds yeah. like you're making like a small scale biggie almost though, where you have the, the 20 bands and I know the biggie isn't totally a music festival, but you're bringing in the, the music and combining the culture festival of the biggie where you're, yeah, all the different vendors and all the different people coming in. Like it's a, yeah, it seems like a good little, a good like model scale for you to emulate. Exactly. Yep. And I like the the focus on the DIY mm -hmm. scene is huge because the I guess the foundation of the whole festival idea was, okay, I could pay some band from anywhere to come and it's not cheap, but you could pay them to come mm -hmm. and set up and play a show and then throw a bunch of locals on it and you're now giving the locals a chance to play to a bigger mm -hmm. audience. And it's like that works out and then plus I can throw my band on there and it's like, why, why not? Yes. Uh, so it kind of just has grown into 
now I'm not so focused on the music because like the the people are going to show up for the bands regardless. Mm -hmm. So it's now what am I going to, what's going to keep you there all day? What's going to help you discover more bands across the longer point of the day? So working more this year on trying to create the outdoor environment of vendor booths, games, anything like there was talks of a dunk tank there's like it's shit like that we're still trying to figure all of it out but like a- anything to make it more of a community event is kind of what the plan was this year any big like marquee vendors or games that you want to advertise and let people know are going to be there where yeah some of it's still <laughs> in the works but anything set up that we want to chat about yeah. yeah a lot of it is still kind of coming together uh, the last two years there's been like a small cornhole tournament that happens like Perfect. it's not yes, set yes, up yes, but yes. the uh, the guys from Shortwave bring like a custom-made cornhole. That's thing. perfect. Uh, yep. And somebody else had another one set up, and they were playing for a little while. So that's, can jam tournaments. That's a, yes, more tournaments, please, yep. for the we sports may, fans like me. There was talks about trying to do an organized sport event, but it's, it gets to be a logistical nightmare. <laughs> of course, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, vendors and stuff. Uh, I have to give a sh- quick shout out to Pray for Us Clothing. They're yes. our big uh, main sponsor this year. Uh, super helpful, uh, obviously with being able to pay out bands and, uh, fund the whole festival. Uh, they make like metal type clothing. It's a really cool brand. Uh, so check it out. Um, but them, uh, and, uh, big notable SJC drums Absolutely, is going to be backlining the two kits uh, so all the bands will be playing on SJC kits. That's so great. that helps with time management and stuff to keep it all flowing and give everybody maximum amount of time to play, yeah. which is also important because I do always feel bad when you go to like Warp Tour. Uh, these bands play for 25 minutes mm-hmm. and it's like, oh man, <laughs> I really wanted to see that one band. I don't know if I want to go just to see the one band. So it's like mm-hmm. the alternating stage thing allows for... A lot of it is people bringing their family members and stuff. So it's you want to give the family member kind of like a safe place to go that's not like a basement venue yes. because yeah. I've had that problem where I have to tell mm-hmm. my mom's like, is this one I can go to? And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> to be fair, there's nothing wrong with hanging out in basements. <laughs> no, no, just, no. To, just to assert ourselves here. <laughs> those, uh. those are the best shows, but it's like I don't want my – I don't want my mother there. It's, <laughs> 100%. It's like my mom would get destroyed in the pit. Uh, <laughs> Which would make for good content and make for the would. future shows better. So <laughs> yin and yang here. But no, I'm with you. We got to protect mom at all costs here. Yeah. So th- it's it's cool to have like um, to make the event bigger than just like a show mm-hmm. and then giving them a good amount of time to actually perform and have the parents see and all the friends come out and there's the changeover of bands is going to be so quick that I'm hoping that while a band is playing outside, they're going to end and the band will be halfway through their set inside that you're like, Oh, I can go check out. That sounds cool. Mm -hmm. And then while they're finishing, the other band is going to set up and I think it's going to have a good flow, but we're going to have, uh, each of us is going to be kind of like logistics. That was always get messed up. (laughs) uh, My friend was just at sick new world out in Vegas. That big festival just happened. And that happened to Sleep Token. There, I think it was, yeah, 45 minute set that they were 15 minutes late to because of tech stuff and they had 10 minutes in the middle. Yeah. So that 45 became 25 real quick. And yep. it's like, damn, yeah, that's a, a huge sacrifice. And thankfully, we're not at the Sleep Token scale yet. So it's not as big of a loss. No, but yeah. everyone wants their 25 minutes. And I would argue that Sleep Token cares less about those 20 minutes than bands, yeah, your show will care about half of their set right. being cut. Yep. Like, I think for a local band who is playing one show the summer, those that half of the set is huge. And those 10 minutes yep. maybe won't change their life but it really does impact their memory of the thing and just how they right. felt about the whole process. Yep. And um, I guess part two of that then is, are you the stage manager who has to go like, it's 415, guys, I, you, ha- you have to stop. Is that going to be your job this summer or do you get to delegate that to someone else? <laughs> it, it's kind of like a, it is my job, but uh, I can tell the sound guy like, yeah. uh, we're cutting it kind of short or cutting it kind of close here, <laughs> this and that. I did have to... I think it was last year I had to tell one band, like, we got to cut it. Things are going to run late. That is, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, But with the multi stage thing and having it be, we have enough bands where if it, we're giving everybody their time. Mm -hmm. So if it does run 
a little bit over. It's not like the end of the world because we have the chance to make it up in the back and forth kind of thing. Uh, the headliners, I think, start at like nine-ish. So it's going to be scrambling kind of mm-hmm. up until then. And I don't even think that they have to play at a specific time. Like cool. Whatever. the I don't think the contract said anything <laughs> like that. But uh, – we're also doing. I don't think a, the contract said anything. <laughs> I don't it's think a beautiful so. sentence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but even if it did, it's like I, yeah. I can make it work. We yeah. we yeah. have been talking about when the doors are and stuff because like, all the vendors and stuff have to get there two hours early mm-hmm. or whatever. And last year I did an hour, and then I realized yeah. <laughs> I'm outside still when all the bands are getting here. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. So we're pushing stuff earlier so that way we can try to have maximum amount of time for failure in the middle of the day. <laughs> Which is unfortunately guaranteed. That is the one thing I've learned yes. at production, at shows, <laughs> at my own music videos even. It's like I am a planner. I think I do a pretty good job of planning stuff. And if I say it's noon to six, we're probably six, maybe 630. But like I try and avoid being the noon to six guy that ends up at 10 p.m. We're still, you know, still yep. chugging. But like that's the nature of this world. And it's, it is going to happen. It's such a uh, it must be a stressor for you going into the show of like you can plan it as best you want and unfortunately someone's going to forget their cable and as that happens over five bands 25 minutes are gone and now there's a set that gets chewed up and yeah you have to make a hard call that is nothing to do with your problem and it's not the band's problems either it's everyone made two minutes here and there and unfortunately that adds up uh my much less important question for you that is a very breaking and important question at the same time uh are you also taste testing all the beers then are you getting then to (laughs) if you got all the you know the final say in all the vendors and all the bands you also get the final say in these 20 beers (laughs) if they want want me to test them i will okay <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> uh they I, I think for the most part it's mostly hoax brewing so okay. i've had a bunch of theirs like usually when i'm in there they're like we just made this you want to try it and i'm like absolutely uh it's i think the beer axe in general has 30 something on oh, tap damn. i yeah. didn't realize that there's a whole bunch uh most of them i think are hoax now but they have armada uh I have no idea. That's okay. It won't mean anything <laughs> to me if you didn't no. know. <laughs> but uh, they, there's a bunch of them. They're the, mostly the guys that I talk to, so it's I'm always drinking their beer. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Beer. I was hoping for like a wedding cake tasting kind of thing here where you just got to sit down with 50 beers and go, that would be great. a little too hobby, yeah, we, <laughs> a little too light. Last two years, we had uh, custom beers that we – I went in on the uh, – That's cool. The first year, I went in and actually brewed it with them. We made a cool video. It was a green beer. Uh and then last year we did like a can, which was for me as a designer, that's always something that yeah. makes you excited about doing like some sort of thing that you can hold in your hands. Uh, the can was cool. It was uh, it was an IPA though. So on a hot summer day, <laughs> it was like maybe that wasn't the best <laughs> choice. But a little uh, too intense for the day. Yeah. Yeah, we still did the the green beer again. So it was like we wanted to have the one that was like a light beer, which mm-hmm. was the green one, and then having a second option. But it was like even I was drinking that, and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> it's hot." <laughs> I like the can, but everything inside of it's <laughs> yeah. a little bit too much for me. But if you kept it for the winter or Hell something, yes. it was they <laughs> flew. We, they only made like fifty cases, and they were gone. So that's a great was, problem to have. Yeah. Hell yes. I, uh, I'm also curious, uh, you're taking a lot of pride in like the DIY small side of this. And I think I have the same thing. And as a self-employed person, the, the fear that I have and the conversation I have a lot on here is like, as self-employment grows, it becomes a nine to five again, unfortunately, where yep. as I, you know, this started with me just filming and editing. And now it's like, I'm filming and editing and I have to delegate this task to someone. I have to communicate this to someone else. And that grows and that grows. And it's like, eventually you're managing a team and doing all the stuff that you would be doing in, in your office. But it's just that your passion grew to such a scale that it is not quite your passion anymore. I'm curious when the future of the festival looks like to you, where it's like this can only scale so far before it leaves your hands. Uh, And this is the problem I have with my own camera, where it's like uh, I can only be a one man music video director for so long. At a certain point, I need someone to help with lighting or to help carry stuff or build something or pre-pro and all these tasks that go into it. But like I'm there's something beautiful to me about being like a big fish in a small pond. And it's scary then to go be the small fish in the lake and not even worry about the ocean as you know, waste down the road. I'm curious, like, is it exciting for you to move from the pond to the lake? Are you similar to me where you're hoping kind of to stay in the pond for as long as possible? Like what is the perfect growth for this thing for you? So I've, I've been putting some thought into this as we've been promoting this year from, I think we launched in April and now it's mid may and I'm like, okay, and starting mm-hmm. to kind of see 
how this year is bigger than the last year and projecting mm-hmm. future. Uh, I always love to, so I see all these music festivals pop up, like even some at the beer racks, even mm-hmm. some, uh, in like there's a, this weekend there's a ska fest in Manchester, I think, uh, that'll be over by the time this comes out, but <laughs> shout out, <laughs> shout out. Um, uh, and it's like, sometimes I feel like there's an unnecessary need for competition, especially mm-hmm. within the small DIY type thing. My whole thing is if you want to collab, hit me up. Cause like, there's so many people that I could reach out to for things, but it's like, I can't, deal with all of that at the same time it's like mm-hmm. if you are if you like this and want to get involved like just let me know because i would as much as i do love doing everything myself and it's kind of like become my little baby essentially mm-hmm. uh next year like booking all the local bands and stuff i'm definitely gonna you need probably a kindergarten teacher for that baby, <laughs> you send that baby <laughs> yeah. to school and let it start get its way i'm gonna yeah. need somebody like who I've I've been kind of reaching out to sure. a few and trying to see like other promoters like if you want to kind of collab with me on this next year you can get you know all these younger local bands like let's get some of them in here and it's like not somebody completely taking over next year but I think down the road it'll be more of like I can kind of oversee but have a division in each kind of like category mm-hmm. and I know that there's a lot of I'm I'm not Obviously, I could put this great show on, but I'm not the most talented promoter in the state by any means, and other people are doing it way better than I am, and it's mostly just trying to get... I know that I can put on this big-scale event. Maybe I I kind of know that my weak spot is maybe like in some of getting a good, diverse group of bands. It's mostly just because I don't know enough people, and mm-hmm. that's kind of what the the festival was meant to do, was to try to branch out... And in the early years here still, we're still, we're only on year three. Once we start seeing like a reasonable profit every year, it's like I can start to pull in out of state bands. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my original idea with creating the booking company was I know all these bands from being in my last band from like Massachusetts that are looking to come down here and play. I don't have a band anymore, so I can book a show for them pretty easily. And, uh, it turned this year where like we're booking the bands for the festival and I'm like, Oh shit, I bought a stage. Like I got to make sure that people come out. (laughs) I forgot about this fucking stage. (laughs) So it's, it's, uh, this is definitely a a growing year. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, we're doing everything we can to kind of recoup, but, uh, it's going really, really well. So I I can't complain. We've already doubled last year. So hell yeah, it's, uh, we have double the amount of bands, so it's, it makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling good about it, but the the more the more DIY that we can get it without it becoming like a corporate and too many hands in the pot, I would mm-hmm. love that. I, I don't want it to be when we were young fest. I don't want it to be this huge thing, but like if I could get it to the point where it's like uh I can do the same amount of work I'm doing now and maybe do it down the East Coast would be sick that would be like the absolute biggest that i would want it to do it's the same amount of hours i'm putting in now but assuming that if it's that big there's like 20 other Delicating. hands involved yeah. so that would be great but uh i don't see it becoming that big <laughs> but I, I like to manifest dreams i i like to ask people about their dreams because one of them will be right and then i get to be like we talked about <laughs> it i knew that guy before he was famous and cool before the Coors light sponsorship came in Coors light <laughs> Hell yeah. So down the East Coast would be the the dream there. That was, yeah. You segue right into the next question is like, yeah. And if you could flick a switch in 10 years, are you, I was going to ask you running, yeah, when we were young festival. And it sounds like that that's a, not quite what you're hoping for, where you're hoping to keep it. Yeah. A local DIY thing, but to spread it out and get the Virginia DIY scene involved in their local, right. local yep. shit or whatever is going on. The down concept there. of the festival in a different location, even mm-hmm. if it's just mass, I think we, we even talked about that last year trying to work with a promoter up there to do the same idea, but in a different spot. Uh, that gets crazy because it's like, this is a Saturday mm-hmm. and it's like, it works on a Saturday. We're not as big as like warped where people are going to take off a Wednesday to come out and see a local band fest. Mm-hmm. But that's like the the big emphasis on trying to find headliners. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I'm reaching out to these humongous promoters. People, one of the promoters for this year is the guy that books like, every band that you've ever heard of in the scene. 
And I'm like, okay, well, this is terrifying. Uh, mm-hmm. Just me asking to book one of his lower level va- bands, but you're like, oh shit, like it's that easy. It's like if you have the capital to just like put out mm-hmm. and get a band, it's like we could make this huge, but I got to get sponsors and all that stuff. Because right now it's 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 hurting my wallet in a certain <laughs> instance. Uh, but a lot of the stuff comes like day of and yeah. So it's an investment, unfortunately. It is, yeah, yeah. it is. But it's um. I always say if I can make my money back, it's a success. That's all I really care about. It's like I, I, I'm not going to make a dumb decision, but it's like I did buy a stage. <laughs> so I'm stuck here with uh, <laughs> with a stage and uh, uh, an empty wallet. <laughs> but it, it comes back. And usually towards the uh, closer to the festival date, we're, we're usually in the profit, which is nice. Yeah, in there, yeah. Hell yes, and the vendors can take it from there, and the bar profit hopefully, yeah, it gets cut and split yep. a little bit, and everyone can make their money on top, and yep. it all goes well when it's all said and done. Yeah, uh, and they usually do, which <laughs> is good too. Like the all the vendors and food trucks and the bar is always happy. So, hell yes. Yeah. Uh, can I ask? And I don't know if this is a over TMI kind of question, but has it turned a profit in the last two years, or has it been kind of like? neutral and this is the first time where you're seeing like like hope for it or is yeah and again please don't overshare anything you're not comfortable sharing oh, yeah. there because uh, i know money's weird year one was uh i want to i'm trying to think of percentages mm-hmm. so we put in it wasn't like a whole bunch but we returned that plus about 25 percent. okay so uh way less than like this year was put in so we didn't make as much last sure. year we made about <clears throat> we put in x percent mm-hmm. and we got back that plus 50 or so hell yeah okay so, so continuing to grow yeah it continues to grow this year i think uh as far as that total number goes it's going to be way higher but i put in way more mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh to try to just get it seen by as many people as possible i'm running ads i'm doing all this stuff trying to just get it the name and yep. brand recognition out there um that rules. So, it's great yeah. to see it continue to grow. We continue to grow at twenty dollars tickets again. I think it brings right. back to the first point of like, even if you go to thirty, then yeah, that percentage is huge, and we're still happy. Like, I think it's incredible to have a any kind of margin at a twenty dollars ticket. Seems unheard of, yeah. but it seems like promoters would like scoff at that. Of like, yeah, I'm paying twenty eight dollars to go to the Webster most times for a similar three hundred, four hundred person type show, uh, and that's yeah, four bands that we're talking about. And I guess the Webster maybe costs a little more than the B Rex to run, but. Yeah, same shit. It's a show either way. Yeah. So yeah, twenty bucks is about as good as you're gonna get for right. any entertainment yeah. to go see. It is. It's it's unfortunate because uh, the hoax hoax guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin was involved in another festival that was happening last year, so he kind of was doing a similar thing as, that we were doing. He was like, "Man, the the costs of doing this is like crazy," and I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, dude, it's." you really got to like act on a budget the best you can. And I'm like, I'm running around asking for favors. I feel so bad half the time with, but I'm so thankful to everybody that's involved. That's helped me out. Um, but like the amount that goes into something like this, I think yeah. is a, is a huge oversight for a lot of people that are like, Oh, I could do that. Like, it's like, Oh, it's just booking 20 vans and this. And I'm like, I got a lot of money. Get 20 of your friends to your apartment this weekend. Like just start <laughs> yeah. there. Like right. then now we're talking about 20 bands of five people that we don't know. And right. we're trying to get them to a place. that's also not our house that we also have to confirm. Like, yeah, get 20 of your friends over and then talk to me about how easy yeah, it is to get right. 20 bands to a festival. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's like, there's so many things that I would love to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I have to do the extreme budget version of that. So it's like I found a great vendor for uh, like um, stage backdrops, yep. like big flags. I'm like, that was a huge thing because I didn't have to spend thousands of dollars to get something like that. I can mm-hmm. just pay a decent amount of money, a reasonable amount of money sure. to get like a really cool visual, especially for somebody who does like video and mm-hmm. photography. All the looking back at all the pictures, it's like it's great just to have yeah. the big logo and the color back in the in the background. Yes, 
Is there any like a, a dream list? You mentioned that there was like you have to ask for a lot of favors. And yes, I'm in the same boat for you where I hate asking for favors and I try and save them for the moments I need them. And it sounds like that's what running a festival is, is the moment. So I think you've earned it. I, I would assume that you have yeah repaid the favors in advance. And yeah, it's all kind of coming back full circle. But uh, as we're here on the show and there are other creatives listening, are there other people that you would love to reach out to? Is there, I mean, you have graphic design covered, but is there like a, a certain field that you're like, man, if I could get someone for blah, 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 it would be a huge weight off my shoulders like yeah yeah what are is there anyone that you would hope to reach out to you um i do i I am working with a new videographer this year to get some video because that's like something that i haven't like invested in Mm -hmm. in the past uh but knowing that this is going to be kind of like more of a marketing endeavor uh i was like i need good visuals Mm -hmm. so i'm like i hired a photographer for the whole day a videographer for the whole day that's covered which that was like last week that wasn't covered yet but that's that's good hell yes progress Um, the thing that i think i had kind of said this before if i could kind of pass off the booking some of the local bands that would be huge uh anybody who does like who knows local bands and does promoting like hit me up i'm always happy uh to talk to anybody and uh i think something that would be really cool to have would be like an art installation. And we had talked about this when I was, when I had my last meeting with the uh, guys at the, at hoax uh, to try to find like somebody who could like make a big sculpture or some shit like that. Like, I don't, it could be anything. Yep. I'm like, that would just be like a cool, the one thing we're kind of missing out on is like a little bit more of like an artist, uh, grounds kind of thing it really does i i do my best to try to like make the i had a beach backdrop thing i was hanging up some stuff around but it's like being able to shape the space Mm -hmm. i think it would be really cool to get more artists involved like if even if it's I, i know that we can't spray paint the walls but like maybe and i may even do this i haven't i got i got time uh but like chalk artist or something that could do the something cool in the parking lot I think it's also, uh, you're right, it's a marketing thing, and I think it's both for the people there, but it's motivating people to then put it on their Instagram story and say, mm-hmm. oh, I was here, and yeah, give people an extra reason, whereas you're talking about a statue. I was like, yes, something uh, something iconographic, I guess, would be the, the very fancy, <laughs> exaggerated yeah. word for it. Of like, we totally. don't need a literal monument, but something that is, right. yes, identifiably yours, and something that everyone walks by and goes, holy fuck, and make right. sure that that's on their story. Yep. The photo go, ops are huge, yeah. and that's, that's something that we're... Uh, we are upping this year. I had the first, (laughs) it's kind of funny. The first two years I bought a beach backdrop and Mm -hmm. I had just like a green, I have a green screen set up. So I used my poles and just kind of ran it on there Mm -hmm. with duct tape and the whole thing. And I cut out waves with cardboard. It looked so like budget esque, but it was, it it was fun. And that's like, that's the whole thing with the, the DIY it's like I'm not gonna pay some corporate entity to make me a some sick wave thing made yeah. out of concrete or whatever. But like, uh, but yeah, if you're good with concrete. Let me know <laughs> if you if you can make a skateboard ramp in the parking lot. Let me know. Uh, <laughs> we we talked about that on the first year actually doing like a skate jam. Is that just like a liability issue? I assume. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be crazy. So many people would get hurt, and then it'd be my fault. Uh, I like, uh, I scroll through Facebook marketplace is my hobby. That is you know, one of the things I do for fun in the evening. And for some reason, Facebook marketplace thinks I skate and I've never skated my whole <laughs> life, but I see so many half pipes and quarter pipes for sale on there. And it's like, who, <laughs> what is happening here? I, I would, I would have loved to have a mini ramp, like in my backyard. That was, rule. Uh, that rule. But these are like, like $10,000, like, like oh, real. Shit. And it's like, who, like. Yeah, there can't be that big of a market of people who like need that and aren't building it themselves. It feels right. like skateboarding is like hand in hand with building shit yourself. And like the idea of going out and buying a pre made mini ramp seems almost like antithetical to everything yeah. that skateboarding and is. And with skate parks everywhere, it's like mm-hmm. just go to the park. Yes. And meet Maybe some get people. like Razor Scooter Jam and set something with a little bit less liability involved. Oh, yeah. Involved. See, all ages this year, we can get the kids on the scooters. Yes, Hopscop Jam, all the good shit happening here. Hell yes. Uh, as we wrap up here, um, any other questions here? I want to touch on the festival. No, I feel like we've touched on everything there. Uh, anything from the festival that you want to air out before I ask you about other stuff outside of the festival here quickly? Um, I think uh, we got a lot of good shit covered there. Yeah. Um, 
Yes, cool. cool. Um, my last question for that, like, or last two that I like to wrap up with, uh, is one: What is something you're currently learning, like outside of all this stuff? So we've talked a ton about, yeah, all the graphic design, all the running a festival, but like that is a, yeah, that is a job that you were fulfilling for the short term. Are you a rock climber? You mentioned you were a cross country runner. Are you still running marathons? Like, are you a knitter? Like, what are <laughs> what are you into outside of this? Uh, so in the free time, me and my uh. I started a new music project that I've been working on since I since I left my last band. Uh, I've been kind of focusing on that a little bit. Rad. While it's uh, since it's mostly been cold, uh, I do like to go outdoors. Me and the same friend I doing the music with, we go backpacking. Okay. So we hike the Appalachian Trail. Hell yes! How and, much of that did you do? Uh, I've only done it for the last two years, I think. So we haven't covered like too much ground, but. I've pretty much finished Connecticut Hell for the yes. most part, Damn. plus a little bit of mass. And the trail goes from like, it's like Georgia all the way up to Maine, right? It's yep. like, like Georgia full. To Maine. Damn. Yeah. Some people do it in like, I think it's five months is the whole thing. And is I'm that really a dream? Going. If you, if you had it all, yeah. If you were 35 and could retire, <laughs> would that be in your future? Yes. Yeah. If I could, uh, if I could get the time <laughs> off yeah. and all that stuff, I would love to do that. It'd be great. But, uh. We're going camping, just regular camping for Memorial Day weekend. So we're Rules. we're starting to get into that that weather. Do you have so. a favorite camping spot? Are you a late guy? You're in the middle of the woods? Are you DIY camping? You're going for the? Mm. I know there's like people who go in tents, and I remember I went with some buddies, and there was like pre-made like I think they were called lean tos, where it's like lean a three walled yeah. structure, so yep. it was a little more shelter. Like, yeah, are you are you making your own tent, or are you taking some some advantages? We actually <laughs> use hammocks. Okay, yeah, hell so yes. we we. Uh, you got the huge backpack on, and the hammock is only like maybe packs oh, down to be like this big. I okay, I yeah. misunder. I was thinking camping, like yay, me and my friends. But you're saying like we're gonna take a backpack and like go fucking make this happen for five days on on the go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hell so we yeah. bring okay. We bring uh, like freeze dried meals, and you have like a cup that you can boil water with a little butane mm-hmm. tank. It's fun. Did you grow up doing this? No. How did you? It's, so my, it seems like you would die if you like, didn't grow up doing it. The drummer of my last band that I was in, uh, I think, has been doing it for a longer yeah. extended period. Uh, and then being in the band together, we got closer, <laughs> all that stuff. And then he was like, you should come with me. And I'm like, I've never done anything. Like I would that. just so, bring so much goldfish and be like, this yeah. this will get me through something. I do usually bring goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's like you, you leave work early on a Friday and then Mm -hmm. you get home like midday Sunday and it's, it's just like a nice to get into the woods and sleep in a fucking hammock and yes, be one with nature. I've gotten into golf in the last year, which is not the same thing, but for me, those two or three hours of outside reset time, yeah, scratch the same itch. And I think you need a a more forceful scratch (laughs) to relieve it, but it's yeah, the same outdoor kind of reset. I just end up smelling a lot worse than you do (laughs) when you're done. (laughs) (laughs) Probably spending a lot less money in the process though. So yeah, ups and downs there. Although I play about the cheapest version of golf possible, but neither, neither here nor there. Um, cool. Hiking, uh, any other, yeah, graphic design and they're making music. Yeah. Any other artists, uh, do you want to, you said you started a new music project. Uh, is there anywhere you want to send people for any songs that are out anywhere that a song might be out on Instagram? Um, anything we would like to alert people of, um, or big things coming soon is the classic band big, answer that always works. Big hashtag big things coming soon. <laughs> Hell yes. Uh, we have, I don't want to put out too much because yep, stuff, no stuff might change and Please. I'll end up killing myself about it. Red. Uh, <laughs> I guess maybe but Brad the, is the wrong <laughs> response <laughs> there, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we got, uh, We've just been grinding on music pretty Hell much, yes. and uh, it's really nice to like have a more of a creative input in the music side. Mm-hmm. I was kind of doing more less of less involved in the music in the last project, so it's nice to have uh, a big say in kind of like here's the vision for the sound and us batting off each other just feels really good, and it's 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 in a good spot. So I'm really excited. I know a lot of. Uh, some of my friends that are probably listening to this have heard some of that stuff and they've expressed that it's uh, you can hear kind of the enjoyment in the sound, which is really I'm just trying to have fun. End of the day, yep. booking shows, making music, none of it fucking matters. The wor- world is still going to turn <laughs> without me here doing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to have fun and make other people happy. So I love that message. I think I found yep. a similar thing of like, 
I'm not going to make the best music video in the world. I would love to. I would love to believe that I'm going to wake up Steven Spielberg tomorrow and put out <laughs> whatever Steven Spielberg has made. But like mathematically, probably not. Mathematically, we can't all be Tom Brady, unfortunately. Right. So then the game is, yes, can I just make the thing I like the most and have the most fun along the way? And I'm doing my best to get closer to that every day. Where I think it's easy to get sucked into the, into the rat race of it all. Uh, but yeah, certainly I think that's part of the ethos of the show is like, I, I can't I can't let this be my job. It has to be fun. It has to be an outlet. And this is a way to yeah, yeah. meet people, network, I guess, similar to what the festival did for you is like a way to f- pull me out of all the other shit that I'm doing that is great, that it's beautiful, but it is shit at times. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's nice to come here and yeah, kick your feet up a little bit and not have to worry about all those things. Um, and yeah, do the things that are fun and enjoyable and make you happy. So hell yes, my man. I, I feel fulfilled talking to you. So I'm glad. Sweet. I appreciate you <laughs> coming by and stopping time. Please, if you're listening, go buy uh, tickets to Shoreline Summerfest. Uh, it is on July 20th in East Haven, Connecticut at the Beer Axe. Um, TJ, you rule. Anything you want to promote before you get out of here? Where do people follow you on social media? Um, yes, anything you want to remind people of before you get out of here? Yeah, if you're a local artist or a local musician or anything, I make T-shirts. So uh, my whole message is short run at an affordable price. So if you've talked to other people who make T-shirts and stuff, uh, sometimes they tell you you have to make a hundred. Mm-hmm. I can make as little as you need and as still do a great job. someone who's currently having t-shirts <laughs> printed, I can relate very much yep. to this conversation. <laughs> so, uh, any artists out there that want their art on t-shirts and all that stuff, I Sick. can do that. So, Sick. Yeah. And are you helping uh, design as well and then helping things get screen printed or people come to you for the whole one-stop shop deal there? I can do a little bit of both. I can do pretty much anything, which is <laughs> Hell yes. uh, design and printing. Uh, I do printing through Monumental Merch. That's just at Monumental Merch. I do design freelance through Reading Design, which is my last name, design. And you can just follow me and my life at TJ underscore Reading. Uh, all on Instagram. That's main platform. Uh, everything has a website. So portfolio, uh, screen printing. You can go monumental dot, monumentalmerch.com to get a quote there. And just follow me for fun uh Shit, Fun I post stuff. Yeah. backpacking photos and cool. <laughs> nature and any concerts I go to, pretty much that's all I put on there. Hell yeah. Support TJ. Uh, go to the show. And if you've made it this far, please leave a like, comment on the video. I hate asking for those things, but unfortunately it does help. So have a beautiful evening. We'll talk soon. And yes, episode 66 from everyone. We did it. <laughs>